And we are live here now on the Fantrax Twitter. Eventually, it'll go on the Fantrax YouTube and the P2W Fantasy Podcast. My name is Nick Scripp. I am the NFL content lead for Fantrax. Going live fairly consistent now that we are close to the NFL season. We're nearly two weeks away from actual football, which means there's a lot of crunch time happening right now in fantasy football drafts, people shaping their rosters, and actual you know, activity in fantasy football leagues. I think there's, you know, a long uh, wait between seasons. Some people are at it year round in dynasty leagues. Some people are just coming back. So it's awesome to to have more activity and more people involved in fantasy this time of year. So we have a really good show here today looking at who could be this year's blank. So we're looking at fantasy performances from last year and who can replicate some of the qualifiers for those performances for this year. Tell your buddies we're live. Let's get it. Uh, I play to win, no fear to give. I feel what I can't forgive. I go all in this time. Yeah, I won't regret. I'll pick the best on trip. They don't understand. I play to win. Yeah, I play to win. I play to win. Yeah, yeah, I play to win. I play to win. Oh, yeah, I play to win. I play to win. Yeah, yeah, I play to win. I play to win. All right, so we o- we're always looking for uh, this year's blank. So a lot of people are chasing, you know, who is this year's Puka Nakua, which the answer is probably nobody, but we can take other performances from last year and try to identify who is this year's performance from last year, or, you know, insert the uh, the player here. So let's start things off. First guy on the list here, who is this year's Raheem Mostert? So Mostert last season, 209 rushing attempts, 1,012 rushing yards, 25 catches, 175 receiving yards, 21 total touchdowns, 17.9 fantasy points per game that ranked fourth. So what is the qualifier here? A veteran running back who has slept on in drafts, but explodes for a big fantasy season with touchdown upside, which again translates to fantasy managers having that player in their lineups weekly. So who is the 2024 version of 2023 Raheem Mostert? It's James Conner. Across James Conner's final five games in 2023, he averaged 20.8 rushing attempts, 102.8 rushing yards, 4.92 yards per attempt, one rushing touchdown, 2.6 receptions, 0.4 receiving touchdowns, and most importantly, 23.86 fantasy points. Dominant, extremely heavy production right there. Connor has averaged over 15 fantasy points per game for three straight seasons now, which shows extreme consistency for fantasy football. The issue for Connor has always been injuries, right? With him playing in 13 or uh, fewer games in six of his last seven seasons. So Connor does have a major touchdown season under his belt with 18 total in 2021 and has a veteran discount right now, I think, for fantasy football. He's being drafted as the running back 19 right now. So, you know, Trey Benson is a guy that was drafted in the third round that I think is the future of Arizona, but the now is very much James Conner. I think that a lot of people are not super excited about him being an older veteran with some injury history. It aligns to Raheem Mostert from last year, and I think this year it's James Conner. Who is this year's DJ Moore? So DJ Moore's 2023 stats, 136 targets, 96 receptions, 1,364 receiving yards, eight receiving touchdowns, and 16.9 fantasy points per game, which ranked ninth. The qualifier, a wide receiver who has a huge season in his new home after departing the team he spent years with. So the 2024 version of 2023 DJ Moore is Deontay Johnson. Ranking 39th the last two seasons in fantasy points per game has been rough for Deontay Johnson, but so has the state of the Steelers passing game during those two years. Johnson is a guy who has had heavy fantasy football impacts in the past with seasons of 14.8 and 17.2 fantasy points per game back in 2020 and 2021, which ranked 22nd and 8th. Johnson has historically been a target earner with seasons of 147, 169, and 144 targets. He is simply a guy that gets open. I am projecting Johnson to be Bryce Young's wide receiver one in an improved Carolina offense, which can draw plenty of fantasy relevance, seeing that Adam Thielen 
had heavy fantasy impacts in 2023, even with Bryce Young struggling as a rookie. The Johnson bounce back can be a big one for fantasy football, and his wide receiver 37 ADP looks foolish right now. Next on the list, who is this year's Nico Collins? Collins in 2023, 109 targets, 80 receptions, 1,297 receiving yards, eight receiving touchdowns, and 17.4 fantasy points per game, which ranked seventh. So the qualifier wide receiver who uh, uh, was quiet for fantasy football up until a quarterback change elevated him to a breakout season. So who is the 2024 version of 2023 Nico Collins? It's Drake London. Drake London has yet to have a fantasy football impact and we've all hoped for it, right? But he's been set up to fail, in my opinion, since being in the NFL. Uh, for one, it's been a mixture of Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, and Marcus Mariota. So that's below average quarterback play. For two, the Falcons attempted the eighth and the second least passing attempts in the last two seasons. The signing of Kirk Cousins this offseason should address both the passing volume and the quality of volume that is coming towards London's way. So London has had... Uh, weeks of 18.7, 14.7, 21.5, and 29.2 fantasy points when targeted eight plus times this past season. So we see when targeted well, he does well. But now the quality of targets changes among the passing volume in Atlanta. So I think Cousins' presence will elevate London to his first major fantasy football season, which will be a breakout one in 2024. Who is this year's Christian McCaffrey? So the 2024 version of Christian McCaffrey. CMC's 2023 stats, 272 rushing attempts, 1,459 rushing yards, 5.4 yards per carry, 67 receptions, 564 receiving yards, 21 total touchdowns, and 24.5 fantasy points per game. The qualifier, he's a running back who has his first full season in a new home and combines a playmaking talent with the best situation he has ever been in with major fantasy football impacts. So the 2024 version of 2023 Christian McCaffrey is Saquon Barkley. I've said this time and time again, but I truly feel that Philadelphia saw the impacts of Christian McCaffrey being added as a dynamic playmaking running back to San Francisco and how that pushed them closer to winning a Super Bowl and said, hey, we, we need to do that. Insert Saquon as the McCaffrey of Philly. We once thought of Saquon as a similar talent to Christian McCaffrey, and some of his big numbers suggest that. Over 1,300 rushing yards in both 2022 and 2018. Five seasons over 40 receptions, with a high of 91 as a rookie back in 2018. Three seasons of double-digit total touchdowns, and three seasons over 17 fantasy points per game. DeAndre Swift in 2023 and Miles Sanders in 2022 both had career highs in Philadelphia between uh, behind that quality offensive line. I think Barkley can follow suit in 2024 in the best situation he has ever been in versus what he had in New York. The clips of Barkley being involved in the passing game is also reassuring because not only can you know he have a big year on the ground, but I think he can truly be utilized as a weapon in this offense similar to Christian McCaffrey and what he's meant for San Francisco. So I think Saquon Barkley's ceiling is extremely high this season and he can have a major impact for fantasy football. All right, who is this year's Jake Ferguson? So Ferguson in 2023, 102 targets, 71 receptions, 761 receiving yards, five receiving touchdowns, and 10.4 fantasy points per game, which ranked 10th. So the qualifier here, a tight end who is underdrafted for fantasy football and has a big season due to being his team's number two target. So the 2024 version of 2023, Jake Ferguson is Pat Fryermuth. 12 games played for the Muth in 2023 uh, and a poor showing through the air in general for Pittsburgh just meant no fantasy football relevance. But back in 2022, Fryermuth finished 12th in fantasy points per game with 9.3 having a big season as a sophomore tight end in the league. In 2022, 98 targets ranked fifth, 63 receptions uh, ranked sixth, 732 receiving yards ranked sixth. Muth also finished number nine in yards after the catch, number seven in yards per route run, and number three in deep targets that year, which shows a combination of upside and efficiency. With Deontay Johnson, now a Panther, 
George Pickens will likely be the number one target in Pittsburgh in 2024. And I project Friar move to be the number two target. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields are a pair of upgrades to what Pittsburgh had in 2023. They also have improvements to the offensive line. So I think it's just a better situation all around. And I think Muth is going to be the number two target, which should mean another top 12 fantasy finish. Who is this year's CJ Stroud? So CJ Stroud in 2023, 499 passing attempts, 4,108 passing yards, 23 passing touchdowns, 167 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, 18.7 fantasy points per game, which ranked third. The qualifier is a high draft capital rookie who has an immediate fantasy football breakout at the quarterback position. So the obvious answer here, the 2024 version of 2023 CJ Stroud is Caleb Williams. It's not a hot take here that the first overall pick in 2024 is good at football, but I truly believe Caleb Williams has the tools matched with the situation to have a huge rookie season. He was highly productive as a prospect, maybe one of the best we have ever seen. 10,082 passing yards, 93 passing touchdowns, 966 rushing yards, and 27 rushing touchdowns through Williams' career is an elite college resume. Williams' top two receiving options, Taj uh, Washington and Brendan Rice, ended up as seventh round draft picks in 2024, which shows Caleb is coming off of a season with fairly average weapons. And now he steps into a Chicago system with proven studs in DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. Fellow first round rookie Roma Dunze, who led the nation, the college nation, in receiving yards last season. A pair of competent tight ends in Cole Komet and Gerald Everett, pass catching running back in DeAndre Swift. I can't remember the last time a rookie quarterback stepped into the situation that Caleb Williams does, and he's one of the best prospects we've ever seen. And unlike C.J. Stroud, he has mobility, so the sky is the limit for Caleb Williams, his rookie season. Who is this year's Jaden Reed? So Jaden Reed last season, just looking at the receiving numbers, because I know he did have some rushing upside, but 94 targets, 64 catches, 793 receiving yards, eight receiving touchdowns, 13.6 fantasy points per game, ranked 26. So the qualifier here, a second round rookie with a first year starter who has an immediate fantasy football impact as his team's most productive wide receiver. So the 2024 version of 2023, Jaden Reed is Jalen Polk. Jalen Polk finishes college career at Washington with a breakout season, recording 69 catches for 1,159 receiving yards and nine touchdowns with 2024 NFL drafts first round rookie Roma Dunze on the field with them. After selecting Drake May in the first round in the 2024 NFL draft, the Patriots selected Jalen Polk right after him in the second round. It was the second move they made after selecting what should be their franchise quarterback. So when you look at the wide receiver room, I think Polk profiles as the only guy you can truly see as the team's wide receiver one. He brings some size. He gets up for the contested catches. He finishes the deep plays. He puts in plenty of effort blocking. Polk has been an absolute stud in camp as well. I think, you know, all this hype is on Javon Baker, who I think is earning himself a roster spot. But in reality, if you just, you know, Google Jalen Polk's camp clips, this guy's balling out for sure uh, with both quarterbacks. Um, I think the upside is going to be there because of weekly volume. And he is being drafted right now as the wide receiver 66 last time I checked, which is an absolute smash if he hits. But I think the opportunity is there with a first-year quarterback whenever Drake May actually takes that lead role on. So who is this year's Rasheed Rice? A little bit different than what we just talked about. Uh, Rasheed Rice, 102 targets, 79 catches, 938 receiving yards, 7 receiving touchdowns, and 13.3 fantasy points per game, which ranked 28th. So the qualifier is second-round rookie who gets drafted to a team with an established quarterback who becomes his team's wide receiver one and has a major fantasy football impact. So the answer is to who the 2024 version of 2023 Rasheed Rice is Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey finishes college career at Georgia, 119 receptions, 1,687 receiving yards, and 14 receiving touchdowns. He profiles as an athletic slot wide receiver. He ran a 4.3940, so he's not like you know a slower, unathletic guy with good hands. He actually can extend 
uh, or, and stretch the fields as a slot wide receiver because of his athleticism. Uh, he runs routes effectively. He's competent at making the plays. And he lands in L.A. via the second round where Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, and Gerald Everett all departed this offseason. Justin Herbert averaged 35.1 passing attempts per game in 2023, and Ladd could be the wide receiver one instantly as a rookie. McConkey has looked solid in camp and could instantly be a player in fantasy managers' lineups weekly. Who is this year's Jalen Warren? So Jalen Warren last year, 149 rushing attempts, 784 rushing yards, 61 receptions, 370 receiving yards, four total touchdowns, 11.6 fantasy points per game, ranked 29th. The qualifier is a team's running back two who earns plenty of touches and pass catching volume that translate to fantasy football production weekly. So the 2024 version of 2023 Jalen Warren is Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson landed in New England this offseason via free agency after four years in Washington. Gibson has caught over 40 passes the last three seasons in a row, finished with over 350 receiving yards the last two seasons in a row, scored double-digit touchdowns in his opening two seasons, and finishes a top 17 running back in fantasy points per game in both of his first two years. With the uncertainty of the, the pass catchers in New England, uh, a new coaching staff, the unclarity of the direction of the quarterback room, I would not be surprised if both Ramondre Stevenson and Antonio Gibson are deployed into the game plan weekly. I can see Stevenson operating as a Najee Harris and Gibson as a Jalen Warren in 2024. Gibson has a history of pass, uh, pass catching upside paired with touchdown scoring that has translated to fantasy football. And that can come back to life in New England in 2024. All right, the last one on the list here, who is this year's Dak Prescott? So Dak Prescott last season, 590 passing attempts, 4,516 passing yards, 36 passing touchdowns, 242 passing yards, 20.7 fantasy points per game, which ranked fourth. And the qualifier is a quarterback that comes off of an injured season and returns to fantasy football dominance with high passing upside. So the 2024 version of 2023 Dak Prescott is – Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow played 10 games in 2023, but he averaged his highest passing attempts per game of his career with 36.5. And knowing that the Bengals offense has a questionable running back room with Zach Moss and Chase Brown, along with one of the league's best wide receiver duos in Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, I would not be surprised if Joe Burrow is the league leader in passing attempts this season. In 2022, and 2021, Burrow threw for over 4,500 passing yards and 34 and 36 touchdowns, with both seasons over 20 fantasy points per game. Now healthy, Burrow is a true bounce-back candidate who can have a huge season through the air that can result in a high fantasy football finish for the position. So it can mirror what Dak Prescott did in 2023. So a lot of these guys have you know similar ranges of uh, outcomes as guys I talked about from 2023, even though they might be very different players at the end of the day. I just, I just found, you know, guys, uh, what they did last year, um, what the bigger picture of what they did is, and then looked at 2024 and said, Hey, there's some guys that can mirror what happened last season. And usually that means fantasy football, positive impact. So thanks guys for tuning in. Make sure uh, wherever you are seeing this, whether it's on uh, Twitter slash X or YouTube or the P2W Fantasy Podcast on Spotify uh, or iTunes. Just subscribe because we have so much content coming out and there's a lot of good stuff that is going to be interesting for one and for two is going to help you guys win your leagues because my motto since I started out in the space is that I'm here to help you guys play to win. Stop playing just to play, play to win. Thanks guys. Have a good night.